Well, we have a 100% chance of rain. Hopefully the dinghy is still there. Hopefully the dinghy works. Hopefully the boat's still there. We did not promise a vacation. We promised an adventure. Good morning. It is the first day on our Great Loop. So today we are exploring a small town in the northern, most northern part of Florida on Amelia Island. And we are so excited to be here, but we have a fairly tight timeline today, so we gotta get going. You ready, Ollie? Yeah. Let's go, let's do this. All right, let's do this. Looks like the dinghy's working today. That's a good start. I'll take it. The water is so calm right now. We had almost 12 knots of wind last night. One of the great things about anchoring that we've learned so far is basically it's really cheap. We pay nothing to anchor right next to the mooring field and all we pay is four dollars to bring your dinghy in to the marina here. So that's really nice. And we definitely take our dinghy in every day because uh, that one. This little town is called Fernandina Beach. It's on Amelia Island and it's in the northeast part of Florida. It's actually the last place colonized by the Spanish in the Western Hemisphere. And it's also known, Amelia Island in general, as the Isle of Eight Flags because so many different countries have raised their flag here. Uh, it's a cute little town and uh, it's on, right on the intercoastal. It's really pretty. Our family homes are not that far from here, a couple, in like an hour but uh, we've never really explored it, so we're really excited to walk around this morning. Now we're about to go meet a college friend for coffee this morning before we have to head out. So we just left my college friend and now we're heading back to the boat. But that was such an awesome experience. We had such a great time chatting and, and catching up with my friend. Thanks Anna for showing us around Fernandina Beach. We also went to the farmer's market and stocked up on all of the fresh vegetables that we needed. So now I feel so much more relieved and hopefully they actually fit in our fridge. Now back to the boat. Time to leave. We got a loot at the farmer's market. It was a huge success and we really, really enjoyed being able to walk just down the street, go to the farmer's market, pick up some fresh produce, and then head back to the boat. That was so convenient and we loved that. The boat is prepped. Now what's left is to pull our anchor and go. And that's the job of the first mate. Ahoy! Good. It's off. Go ahead and pull it up. Forward. Okay, up. Okay, stop. Pull it up. Awesome. All right, all the way. Okay, all the way. All the way, bring it in. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. It was super clean, by the way. No wait. And we're off.
We were following the channel markers, because that's what you have to do out here. One color is on the right, one color is on the left. Then now, at this point in the intercoastal, they switch. So instead of green being on the right, we have red on the right. And I was about to keep following the green on the right, but I was going to see, which is that way. So good thing we didn't keep turning. Now we're crossing the inlet and not going out to sea. Hello. So our boat is a trawler, which means we move really slowly and we sip fuel. So it's very good um, for long distances. Part of going really slowly means that the, the current really affects us. So right now we're going pretty much our cruising speed. So we're losing 30% of our speed just because of the current. And the same thing works on the flip side. Whenever we were leaving the anchorage, we gained 30%. So we were going eight and a half knots. And on now we're running 4.7 knots. And norm our normal speed is like six and a half knots. So yeah, it really affects us. Those are the Good Samaritans who helped give us a ride to shore when our dinghy motor failed us. Again. Like learning boat etiquette, you know, being our maiden voyage and all. And we've realized that whenever you're coming by an anchorage or moorings or like a dock with a bunch of boats on it, you want to go down, you want to bring your speed down to pretty much like minimum wake uh, so that way you don't, you know, rock people's boats too much. So we're approaching our anchorage and we're trying to basically anchor in uh, enough water to where when it gets low tide, which is like seven feet less, uh, we're still about, we're still on the water, but not too deep to where if it gets high tide, it's you know or too it's, we don't have enough scope out for our anchor. So we're learning about where to anchor with respect to the wind. And tonight we're gonna have winds out of the southeast, so we're going up a little bit more to try to be protected by this island. Is this off? Yeah, I can turn it off like it. Engine's off. We made it. Off. Thank you. We just set our anchor here in Cumberland Island, and now hopefully it sets. We're gonna set up some anchor alarms. We're gonna see how it goes. Monitor it closely. Yeah. So this is definitely gonna be our windiest night yet at anchor, blowing up to. 17 knots consistently and then I don't know what the gusts are at maybe 20 something What do you think Ollie? We have our first guest meeting us along our great loop and Elliot is going to go pick them up While I frantically get their bed bedroom ready for their stay I'm Molly. I am Jen's best friend. We have been pretty much best friends since seventh grade. Although we've known each other longer than that. Yeah. Um, and I live in Jacksonville and so we came up here to Cumberland Island which is about an hour north of Jacksonville and met Jen and Elliot on the water. Yeah, and they're gonna spend the night with us tonight. Ooh. Where's she coming? We just spotted the wild horses that are known to be on Cumberland Island. Do you see how like their ribs are kind of sticking out? Like, yeah, I do. Oh yeah, on the front one I can definitely tell.
these wild horses are really, really cool. And who knew that these were in Georgia? So far, we've seen a ton of ruins and um, older buildings, and we've seen a lot of maybe about, what, a dozen or so wild horses. Today's weather has been great because it's been a bit windy to give us a nice cool breeze, yeah. but it also has been like sunny, and even though we had a chance of rain, it hasn't rained yet. Knock on wood. And how does it feel to be off the boat hiking? Oh, it feels great to be off the boat hiking. It feels awesome to be stretching our legs, and I think Ollie's totally in love. And this is definitely the, it's not the longest that we've left our boat on anchor before, because we did that in Blue Springs, we left it pretty long. But um, it definitely makes us worry about the boat anchor dragging. Even though we set it well, uh, it's just with the tide change, it's seven feet here, plus, uh, the wind like blowing at 17 knots it's just stuff to think about you know so we need to have more anchor faith but we'll build that up over time well we have a hundred percent chance of rain in 30 minutes and our boat is on the other side of the island so we are going to hightail back hopefully the dinghy is still there hopefully the dinghy works hopefully the boat's still there i think the boat will definitely work if we get there and uh yeah all right we are coming out here is our boat still here uh yes we are close to another boat though which is kind of scary there she is The boat's pretty close to the other boat. Yeah, it looks closer. That's not good. We might have to move it. I yeah. think we need to move it. Okay, let's do it. What do you think? Well, let's get there closer. What? Let's get up there first and then we might move it. Yeah. That's what I was worried about. I know. Let's, let's go. Wow, what troopers our friends are. We have to, our dinghy only holds three and a half people, so we had to split up our group into two, so that way we could be under the maximum for our dinghy limit. And so Molly and Kyle stayed back at the dock to be round two, and in that time frame of, of going to the dock for the second round, it started to downpour. So, <laughs> everyone in that dinghy, Elliot, Kyle, and Molly are all totally soaked and it is raining so hard I can barely see out and see the dinghy it's wild we did not promise a vacation we promised an adventure and oh my gosh I would be so scared if I was in that I mean I'm also scared being on this boat because I'm a little nervous of our anchor but I think it's just we have a lot of road out oh good the motors running this dinghy motor, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> wow, so when I dropped Jen and Ollie off at the boat, one thing happened is when I took the key out of the ignition, the motor didn't stop. So that was not very good. So I said, whatever, 
we gotta go back pick up Molly and Kyle. And so on the way there, everything's fine. And once we got there, the key came out again and the motor stopped. Well, no big deal. But when we started the motor again, when we tried to start the motor again, it wouldn't start and I couldn't move the throttle. But we had we had kind of like, it started for a second, so we pushed away from the dock. I brought out the oars and we got pushed into shore. And so we tried to start the motor, wouldn't start, wouldn't start, because I couldn't move the throttle to neutral to start it. And then finally I was like, okay, let me like lift up the engine out. And the, the rope was wrapped around the propeller that we used to like dock there. So we had to like lift up the dinghy and Kyle undid the rope. We were able to get the dinghy started. But of course, like it started pouring and lightning all when this stuff's happening. And yeah, I think that might be it for the vlog today. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. Set up them some. Blah, 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 blah. So what am I saying again? You look really pretty in this light. Thanks. <laughs> You're asking me this because Kyle literally ditched us. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you gonna walk through the horse shit? <gasps> oh. <gasps>